So today we'd like to talk about relative speed. In this first example, I'm going to be driving down the highway and Mr. Softy is going to come driving past me. I know my speed, 55 miles per hour, Mr. Softy goes past me, so I know he's traveling faster than I am. And in this case, he's going 60 miles per hour. So if I said, what is, what is his speed? relative to my speed, what you do is since we're moving in the same direction, you subtract the speeds. 60, 55 means we get 5 miles per hour. That means Mr. Softy is pulling away from me at 5 miles every hour. Every hour that goes by, he pulls ahead by another 5 miles. So in the same direction, you subtract to get your relative speed. Here's an example where we have a truck going down the highway and my car going down the highway. And you can see that we are traveling identical speeds. So relative to me, that truck is at rest. This truck has a negative relative speed because it's going backwards relative to me and the other truck. So if we were going 60 and he's going 50, he's going backwards 10 miles every hour. He's getting further behind us. Here's an example from uh, the summer. We had these two kids on a ride and they're gonna fly headlong into a pigeon. So they're gonna be moving up at 25 the pigeon is going to be diving down toward the boardwalk at 15. And since it's a head-on collision, what we do is we add the two velocities together. Okay, so in this case, it would be a 40 mile per hour collision. Okay, what is the average speed, relative speed? Again, this is kind of like the truck and me on the highway. He's not getting closer or further to the car that's pulling him. And if he does move a little bit closer, in the next moment he moves farther away again. So relative to that car, he's going a speed of zero. Here's an example that we don't normally think of. Normally we think we're at rest when we're just sitting still on Earth. But the Earth itself is in motion. So even though our relative speed compared to the Earth is zero, our speed relative to the sun and moon is not. If you're going to build a time machine, make sure you account for space as well. Everybody wants to talk about traveling through time. Here's the thing. Earth is traveling through space going about 60,000 miles per hour. If you jump ahead one hour, but stay in the same space, Earth will be about 60,000 miles ahead of you and you'll find yourself in the middle of space like that would be your last <laughs> your first and last attempt at time travel so once again if you're going to build a time travel machine please also make sure you're accounting for space okay so again handy dandy thing if you ever build your time machine remember that the earth is not at rest relative to the rest of the solar system here we have an example where two guys are riding through the woods on a trail on their dirt bikes. You can see as they move along the trail, at one point they're surprised by some other bikers and they're going to have to jam on their brakes and avoid the other bikers. Had they collided, it would have been like the pigeon and the ride at Wildwood. You would add their two speeds together. So if one is going 40 and one is going 30, that's like a 70 mile per hour collision. This is why head-on collisions are so dangerous. Here's an example where we have someone trying to catch another runner. So you'll notice the runner here is being chased by the runner there and you see they eventually pass him. Okay, at the last moment. So what we'd like to do is this is where they started. There was 20 meters between them. The person in front was going seven meters per second. The person in front covers an additional 56 meters. 
The person behind them has caught up. We want the speed of the trailing runner. So you do it as two separate problems. For the person in front, we do speed equals distance over time. Speed is uh, seven. So we can put seven in here. They've gone 56 and we solve it for time. For the other runner, they have to go an extra 20 meters. So for them, we're gonna do 76 meters and it takes the same amount of time. So whatever answer you got for time there, plug it in here and solve for speed. This will tell us the speed of the trailing runner. To find the relative speed, you subtract the two speeds. And the elapsed time, that's what we found right here. That's how long it took them to catch up. Okay, here we have a soccer ball rolling at six meters per second. The player running at eight meters per second. And we wonder how much ground are they making up per second. <laughs> So, just like we did before, because they're going in the same direction, it would be two meters per second. Every second, they would gain two meters on the ball. Here's one more problem you can try. I'm driving up Route 295 at a speed of 31 meters per second. The police officer passes me at 33 meters per second. How far ahead of me will they be in five minutes? So you can do your relative speed, distance over time. We're going in the same direction, so the police officer is going an extra two meters per second. They're doing it for five minutes. So they would get an extra 600 meters ahead of me. So hopefully you understand how to deal with relative velocity. There's a few problems online that I'd like you to work through. One of them involves graphs, and what you're trying to do is find the relative velocity of these two cars. So you're going to get the distance traveled by each car. You'll get that from subtracting your starting and ending points. You can pick any spot you want. That'll be your change in position. You divide that by the change in time. Do that for both vehicles. Get the change in position over the change in time, and they'll be your speeds. Once you have the speed of the two cars, they're heading in the same direction, so you subtract, and that will be your relative velocity. I hope all this makes sense. If it doesn't, <clears throat> if it doesn't reach out to me, I'll be glad to help you through it.